What annoys me more than a false prophet or a false shepherd are false followers. People that pretend to understand an ideology and to commit to it, uh, to be a disciple of sorts, to be disciplined and to appreciate whatever it is they are committing to teachers, you know? But then they go and they contradict uh, what it is they're being taught. And, and they don't really walk the talk. Or in some people's cases, they don't even crawl their fucking shout. You know what I mean? And in particular, what comes to mind, obviously, are the Catholics, the extremist Christians, who, as much as they may go to church every Sunday, um, and they pray to their God every day, and they pay their penance, um, they still do things every now and then, if not more often now than then, uh, which doesn't really follow the teachings of the Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. It isn't really uh, representative of love and compassion. A lot of the time, at least a lot of the Catholics and the extremist Christians I've met, um, they're very cold to people who do not follow their cause. Like, almost as bad as the white supremacists, the way that they just separate themselves and there's a cutoff point where, oh yes, all creatures are sacred and we love everyone and everyone deserves it. Except you, cunt, you don't deserve forgiveness, you're gonna burn in hell for eternity. And there seems to be a real cutoff point, um, even though they contradict themselves themselves and they do things which Jesus was like, oh no, no, touch, 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 I don't agree with that. They're like, oh no, no, that's okay, that's not bad. I'm gonna, at least I'm gonna pray to God tonight and I'll be sorted. That's why I'm wearing the shirt, as it says, justifying every sin under salvation. Using Jesus as a crutch. Using Jesus as a security blanket. Because one, one is afraid and doesn't understand why we're here. What's going to happen after life? What's the meaning of everything? Well, these guys said that Jesus is going to, you know, come back and he's going to make everyone pay. And if you feel bad and you haven't been nice, then you're all going to burn in eternity like burnt fried rice. And people are like, oh, no, that sounds scary, but you know, at the same time, if I, if I sign up to this and I, and I pray and I say, please forgive me, then that means I'm, I'm okay, right? I'm abolished uh, and absorbed, oh, what's the word absorbed? I don't know, of my sins, right? Because I apologize to the right guy. That's the right guy? All right, fine, fuck it. I'll sign up to that institution. I'll apologize to Mr. Jesus and I won't have to feel like such a crappy human being. I won't have to feel so afraid with all these unanswered questions that would take time and experience and a question, a quest that I am on, questing for the truth. Fuck that hard hassle, having to seek those experiences and those revelations in a, on a personal level. Can't be bothered with that. I'll just take that book, oh, it's a free book. Oh, even more convenient. I'll just read this book. This has all the answers for me. This is my truth. And then they push it. Some of these people, they push it into people's faces. They say, oh, no, no, oh, I found salvation. While fucking the daughter on the side, fucking the altar boy on the side, beating up the wife on the side. You know what I mean? Say, oh, don't, don't talk to him, honey. He's disgusting. As the, as the daughter, who's a true Christian, walks past the homeless man and wants to give him some money. So, oh, disgusting. Don't even look at him. You know what I mean? Just, Contradictions, hypocrites, people that do evil things, or they don't necessarily do what Jesus would do. Um, but then they have the nerve to take their book and shove it in their face while they're shoving their fucking awfulness into the world, onto or into other people in other ways. They'll shove this holy book in your face like they are holier than thou, when they're just the same stinking fucking piece of shit as everyone else. When they have as much to hide, as many skeletons in the closet, as everyone else. Yet, they just hide the horns. Yeah, I don't have any horns. What tail? I've only got my halo today. Bullshit. I call your bluff, sir, madam. Bullshit. I don't buy it. I'm sure most people with two functional hemispheres don't buy it. And you know what? The true Lord and Savior, the true Christ, that is Christ consciousness, the Holy Father, of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost, all that shit, the Father, they don't buy it either. All right, none of these fuckers buy it. None, everyone can see through your facade, they see you hiding behind the pages of your book like an umbrella, umbrella against the reign of judgment, against the reign of, you know, the realization that you aren't as perfect as you pretend to be, and one day you might have to actually atone for that. 
One day you might actually have to pay for that. But so you hide under your Bible, you do your daily prayer, and you feel I'm absolved. Absolved of my sins. Justifying every fucking sin I make under the act of salvation. That's not saving you. That's just lying to yourself. It's making you look like a jackass, right? And you're not gonna get into the pearly gates that way, if there is a pearly gates. Or at least you're not gonna transcend this wheel of trials and tribulations. You're not gonna return to the source of perfection because you're not on the path of Christ consciousness. You're reading shit that's been indoctrinated into you from other people's doctrine that they just gave to you. Like, oh well, for whatever reason, yep, I subscribe to this, this is everything. And you repeat it word for word. Have you actually read the whole Bible? And if you have, has it just been a matter of reciting and memorizing everything? Yes, I am a true disciple. Look, I remember everything. I should have a fucking scholarship in this shit. Because anyone can do that if they put their mind to it. But do you actually understand the teachings in the Bible? Do you understand the wisdom in the Bible that you preach? Or are you just repeating words? Because doing something that on the surface seems right, because you're doing it in proper form, and actually doing it because you understand where you're coming from, because you're rooted in value, principle, truth, all right? You're coming from a place that is authentic, that it resonates with a deeper self, with a deeper awareness, the Christ consciousness I'm talking about, which everyone has, all right? Jah bless Jehovah, the fucking sun, consciousness, energy itself, all right? You can tune into it, or you can get lost outside of the right brain, left brain dialogue, because the right brain is what interprets the word of God and our intuition, the more creative and more abstract truths that are eternal. The left brain is just more the logical, rational, linear shit. That's what it deals with. And we take these books, we take these words, cast out to us as absolute truth and gospel, and we just swallow it whole for whatever motivation. Doesn't make it true. That's just left brain shit. You need to follow your own voice, your own whisper, as it says in the Bible, as Jesus said, along the lines of, that when I close my eyes, the light is blinding. Blinding, which means do not be distracted by fool's gold. Don't be distracted by outside, because it's all a lie, it's mayor, it's illusory. It's finite, it's not absolute, it cannot possibly capture the absolute essence of all that is. All right? But you can get an idea of it if you listen to that voice inside, to the universe that exists inside you, because you, and the identity that has been conditioned and developed, the narrative attached, exists outside of you. If you were born in a white room without anyone else, what would become of you? Nothing. You would be deaf and mute and all this. You wouldn't even have an idea of self, let alone a name or a backstory. So you, your identity exists outside of you, and the universe, the world, God, everything exists inside you and that's Christ consciousness and you just got to listen not to the book not out there not behind excuses not on crutches but to the truth that we're all born with in our briefcase of our hearts a heart-shaped box that's where it is it's that simple and one more thing that annoys me all right you have people like myself that speak about our understanding of God and our understanding and interpretation of Jesus the Christ consciousness and the Holy Spirit and the Father and all this stuff. And people are like, oh no, blasphemy. That's not word for word of what's on my book. That's not in line with my version that I just fucking know is true. Right? And then they say furthermore that people that say that they are Jesus or say that they are a representation of Jesus, that they speak the word of Jesus. People that, that preach holy teachings just the same. You have a lot of new age you have a lot of new Jesuses, really, these days, walking around preaching the same wisdom, the same truth of eternal love, compassion, unity that Jesus did. And what do people say when they start talking about it in the realm of spirituality? These Christians, these devoted Catholics who are like, Oh, that's blasphemy. The Bible is the only place. Blah, blah, blah. That's heresy. That's spirituality. There's no such thing as that. How could you know these things? You're just fucking working for the devil. You're going to burn in hell for eternity. Think about this. Who the fuck wrote the Bible in the first place? And don't you think Chinese whispers over centuries would play a role through all the different places and people that took the book in their hands and wrote it their own way? But even still, go to the original. How did that information get on the page in the first place? It came from a hand. The hand was attached to a man. The man was attached to his heart. And that's where Christ resides. 